How you doing? It's my second time in Singapore in only a few months. Uh, it's one of my favourite parts of the world here. I love the fantastic food you have. You're quite nice too. <laughs> but the food's really good. <laughs> so, uh, my talk is called Mastering Multi-Screen Apps. I'm talking about iOS and Swift, of course. Um, but just briefly, I want to outline a little bit of who am I, because you haven't heard of me before. I run a site called Hacking with Swift at hackingwithswift.com. It's on like 1,200 articles now about Swift, all free of charge. Go and check them out online. I run the Swift Community Awards, where you can vote for your favorite, most useful people and projects over the year. And, hint, conferences over the year. And I have this app for iOS called Unwrap, which teaches you Swift right on your phone with videos and quizzes and more. It's all free. It's on GitHub. Go and check it out. Go and contribute to that. And more recently, I launched a podcast with my friend Sean Allen. It's called Swift Over Coffee. Subscribe. If your friends subscribe, leave a review. It's awesome. Go and check it out. My main job, though, is writing books about Swift, like Swift, or Mac OS, or TVOS, or Design Patterns, or Testing Swift, and more. Lots of books about Swift. That is my full-time job. Thinking about Swift, writing about Swift, talking about Swift, that's literally all I do. And in fact, if you want to hear, you can go to this URL, gum.co slash proswift slash kiasu, to go and snag yourself a free book. It's called Pro Swift. It has like six hours of videos. It's fully updated for Swift 4.2. You get updates for life. You've got a few seconds to photograph that. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, too slow. If you'll get in touch, please do. I am two stores on Twitter and on GitHub and on Reddit and also Stack Overflow. Or you can email me at paul at hackingwithswift.com. I love to have your questions afterwards here, whatever. You can buy me drinks if you want to or just email me. It's fine. I love hearing from you folks. So, Today's plan, what I'm here to speak about. The, the biggest question you might have is, why multi-screen? And in particular, why now? What's changed now to make this topical, that it's interesting or useful for you, to take away and actually make some money from this? Then, we'll look at what we have to work with. The APIs Apple gives us to work with, plus some of the problems we might face using this technology. And then, I'm feeling brave, we're going to build a real app with some live coding. Real model screen app. Now, I hope by the end of it, you'll have enough information you can go ahead and use these APIs to build real stuff and real projects. Uh, but I do believe that live coding is important, right? Uh, you know, I, I could uh, stand up here and tell you, yes, multi screen apps are amazing, go make multi screen apps. But unless you see it for yourself, it's not really real, it's all theory, right? Should remind you, you all use Xcode. You know what it's like. You can expect some comedy Xcode failures today. Let's face it, it's going to happen. So why now? Do you remember this? This was nine years ago when Steve Jobs introduced the iPad for the very first time at the Yerba Buena Center for the Arts in San Francisco. Nine years ago, I've had iPad. A very, very long time now. At the time, we had iPhone OS 3.1.2 being the hot thing we had. Uh, the iPhone OS 3 was my very first iPhone uh, apps being shipped for then. Uh, but the iPad shipped with something new, iOS 3.2. Of course, the phone was gone now. It was just a generic iOS thing, thanks to Cisco licensing their trademark. And the iPhone never got this version. We never had this thing on iPhone. But it introduced lots of new important things for the first time like core text, like UI Bezier path, gesture recognizers, split view controllers, even collection views. We didn't know they were called that at the time. We couldn't use them. But that's when they had the very first sort of pinch to zoom thing going on in the Pictures app. I think it shipped a few years later for us, but it was there in the very first version of iPhone, uh, iOS 3.2. But it also introduced, for the first time, this property, UI screen dot screens. An array of all the screens we have to work with that are connected to our iOS devices. Now, if you look at the number of apps using UI screen dot screens, you'll realize there aren't very many. And this is why. Dongles. Your iPad back then, you could do more than one screen. You had to have a connector basically no one in the world has. 
a lightning to HDMI connector to your dongle for your iPad. Very, very unusual. And so nearly all of us assume and have always assumed our apps run on a single screen. We're just used to it. We don't even think about Windows anymore. This kind of code, don't cry, <laughs> used to be normal. That's a right, make a window ourselves, configure it in the view controller and show it by hand. And that was common in iOS before storyboards came along and now of course storyboards do all that for us. But the landscape is moving quickly. This was dub dub 18. This memorable slide was Apple's answer to the question, are we unifying AppKit and UIKit? No, we're not, allegedly. Instead, they are working with something we call informally Marzipan. Some way of running UIKit apps on AppKit pl platforms like Mojave with some translation. And it's shipped. If you're running Mojave on your Mac, then news and stocks at home are all UIKit apps all running on Mojave looking pretty damn good. And the real iOS apps with a few tweaks for like, you know, menu bars and stuff that are native to Mac OS, but they are there on production Mac OS. Now, they are not perfect. Here's John Gruber saying, uh, in Apple News and iOS, you can open any art in Safari via the share sheet. Am I getting this right? There's no way to do that on Apple News on Mojave. I don't even see a way to copy the original URL. Did anyone at Apple even try using these marzipan apps? But you've got to admit, for a first version that we haven't even got access to, effectively a beta, that's remarkably good. The fact that it even ships and works smoothly and flawlessly. And I think it's all but guaranteed that Dubbub 19, for which I've already booked my hotel room, I'll tell you, will see this thing shipped to everyone. We are all going to get access to Marzipan in about five months' time. And so, that great iOS app you have designed needs to be ready to play nicely in a multi-window environment alongside Finder and Safari. And then, there's this, the new iPad Pro. Ship was a few months ago. These things came with a major spec bump. You now get up to six gigabytes of RAM. That is low end Mac level. You know, eight gigabyte of RAM is a low end Mac. So it's almost there now in terms of power. Of course, CPU is ridiculously overpowered. But they changed the connector. Be gone, hideous lightning thing on iPad, switch to a standard USB C that everyone else uses. And you can connect that thing immediately up to 5K screens. 5K screens, super high resolution screens with a standard cable now from your iPad. So it's now trivial to plug in your iPad to a monitor. And I think it's very likely we'll see USB-C arriving on iPhones, either this year or next year. It's basically a dead cert, which means the thing you have in your pocket, that super computer you have, ridiculously powerful phone, click, now it's a desktop as well. And so, we see folks like Guy Rambo saying this, iOS developers, I would be trying out how my app behaves when there are multiple instances of the same view controller on screen. So it's no surprise, it's no surprise folks saying, get ahead of the game now. Try it out now. iOS 13 is going to change this. Do it now while you can, so you are ready to ship on day one. So that's why now. Things are changing dramatically in the last six months with Mojave coming along with the Marzipan port plus the new iPad Pro and likely soon also iPhone. Now is a great time to start preparing for yourself. So let's look what we have to work with. If we have two screens, from A and B, what you are trying to do depends on how you think your app will work well across screens. For example, you might say, I want to show the same view controller on both screens, either with different information or with mirroring or something else. Or you might take Safari's approach where many tabs can be shown of each view controller. There's four here and four there. Now, if you use Safari on iPad today, you'll know it's extremely powerful. Here's a video of it actually working in landscape mode. You can see little tabs across the top there. But you can grab any one of those tabs, pull it off, and use that for multitasking. 
to have two side-by-side -side tabs of Safari. And this is pretty much, I think, what we're going to get in iOS 13. This kind of functionality will appear. Or you might choose to have one thing on screen A, one thing on screen B, maybe like a keynote presenter display we have, or a big game map, or you know, in Tweetbot you can have tweets here and activity here and who knows what in different views. But regardless of how you do it, there are some fairly fundamental rules you've got to keep in mind. State, touch, and change. Now, when your controllers exist one at a time, only one of these things visible at a time, it's common to add properties to these things, you know, some sort of data to show on a table, for example. And then you might say there are some external sources, some shared resources, maybe a singleton. You might, if you're feeling dirty, talk to your app delegate now and then. So there's lots of stuff in there. But when that goes from one view controller to six or more into the same view controller, will they start to step on each other's toes? And this is where we double down on things like structs rather than classes, constants rather than variables, passing values into functions and getting values back from functions rather than mutating them or relying on state. It becomes much clearer to understand. Are there shortcuts you can take? This is a thing you may see in Xcode sometimes. If you have, if you have a, a, a workspace open, sorry, and you try to open the project separately, Xcode goes, nah, not happening, mate. And that's an easier way out. I mean, it's not ideal. You might want to do it both at the same time, but it solves a problem easily. They can't step each other's toes. It's just banned. As for touch, looking at this picture. We have down here this fancy pants iPad Pro with USB-C. It's showing a, a picture with some UI across the bottom like that. But this thing, the screen it's connected to, that's just a generic USB-C monitor. It's showing the full image. There is no UI. It's not a touch screen. You can't touch the second screen. Apple doesn't even let you touch the second screen. Even the simulator, you can't do it. Your only touch screen is your primary screen. So you have this bizarre place where one screen can only be used with touch. Another one can never be used with touch. And this can really screw you up in terms of how you plan your UI. So think about which screens, if any, will work with touch. This is a keynote presenter display. Where I see in my Mac right now while I am presenting to you. You can see it's got some UI here to customize it. I can modify it. It's got a UI. It makes sense. But what you see is just a big slide. No UI makes sense there. You can't sort of control it here backwards on the screen. It's unpleasant. This works well as a setup of multi-screen. And the last rule is to be prepared for change. Because the natural, natural functionality of these devices is they move around. They're portable. Your iPhone goes with you everywhere. Your, Apple, your iPad goes with you on flights, perhaps. <laughs> but it goes with you lots of places, right? Folks connect and disconnect whenever they want to. They don't want to think what's happening or safely unmount the USB device. They'll plug in and unplug whenever they want to, as often as they want to. And of course, on Mac OS, we're used to the idea you can grab any screen and resize it completely freely. If you thought your current auto layout problems were bad, you ain't seen nothing yet. That notch is small fry compared to any screen size, any screen shape. It'll be freeform. Now, you might remember, if you've been using macOS for a while, macOS Sierra had a lovely trick introduced. They said that any app that had more than one window will automatically be converted into tabs. It'll just happen. So Finder became a tabbed UI overnight instantly. All Sierra apps opted into this by default. You can opt out if you want to, but otherwise, you just get tabs for free. And you've seen how that works in Safari. The tabs from there is gorgeous and has multitasking built into it. What I think is going to happen genuinely is in iOS 13, this will happen in about five months. We'll get access to tabs API in iOS. So be prepared. Now, under the hood, there are three things we care about from iOS. We'll get did connect notification. The user is plugged in a screen, here's a screen, scan it, figure out its size, show some sort of view controller in there, whatever you want to do. Something's happened, connected. The opposite, disconnect. What happens to that view controller is down to you. You might destroy it, you might bring it into the main screen, again, down to your app. The only complex one is mode did change. 
the screen resolution changed somehow, what should you do? And it's complex, of course, because on retina screens, you can change the size freely between scale bigger or scale smaller, as much as you want to, often you want to, and your UI needs to respond to look sensible on that screen size. I mean, we used the idea of size classes. You know, this thing is regular or compact. This is more advanced than even that, because you can go from very high res screens to very low res screens whenever you want to by the change of resolution. So that is what we've got to work with. Now it's time for the comedy part. Where I'm going to have a go at doing a live coding thing here, possibly go wrong, building a multi screen app before your very eyes. Not going to be terribly hard, fortunately. Uh, for extra lols, I'm going to try and use the internet, uh, but because <laughs> clearly I, I like pain. Uh, so let me uh, set up mirroring nicely. Okay. So I can now see what, roughly what you see. We're going to start nice and easy. So what we're going to try and build is an app that actually has a sensible reason for a second screen. We're going to build a trivial markdown editor where I can type onto my iPad in markdown. On the second screen, it will render the markdown into finished, you know, visible headers and links and stuff so you can see exactly how it's going to look when you're ready. So uh, I'm going to try and launch. It's okay. It looks good. It looks fine to me. Here we go. Let's go. It's great. Shh. I'm going to go ahead and press uh, Command N. Uh, oops, easy. You have. There we go. Doesn't quite fit on the screen. There we go. It's a bit too big. <laughs> 720pa. Uh, I'm going to choose a single view app and choose next. Uh, this thing is uh, multi screen markdown, so I'm going to call it multi mark. Choose Swift. Press next. Press create. Boom, there we go. OK. So we need to pass Markdown somehow. Sadly, despite Xcode using Markdown extensively, we don't get any sort of Markdown parser inside Foundation. Thank you very much, Apple. Uh, we've got to install one externally. This is where the internet comes in. Uh, so I'm going to quit Xcode, and I'm going to try and install a pod over the internet. So let's go to desktop, multi-mark, pod in it. Uh, open dot. There we go. I'm going to drag a pod file into uh, Sublime. There we go. Pods multi-mark. There are a few of these. In fact, there are a ton of these because Apple really needs to do one. Uh, I'm going to use my favorite one, which is called down. It's nice and easy. I'll just do pod down. And this is where Singtel is totally not going to fail me. Pod install. Come on, look at that. In almost every other country, that would have failed. <laughs> In almost every other country, that would never have worked. Inside a building on 3G or 4G, it would never have worked. Good job, Singapore. You guys were up well. <laughs> so we've now got a project here. We've got a workspace. Uh, I'm going to use my favorite command, xed dot, to open the workspace. Uh, and it will think about it, and there we go. One huge, it's not even on the screen, workspace. Can you please put it on the screen? There we go. Okay, so you can just about to see that. So we've now got a workspace with that uh, pod installed. Uh, I'm going to look into my project here, open up Multimark, and to begin with, make it nice and easy, our first screen is going to have a full screen text view. Unsurprisingly, so you can type things in. I'll go to the library thing here, look for a text view, drag it out. And I'm going to pin this thing uh, to all four edges of its parent view. It just fills the screen. And I'm going to just get rid of these constraints. So they end up being just basically full width. So uh, you're zero, you're zero, you are zero, and you are zero. Fantastic. OK. Uh, that is a tiny font, even on that high resolution. So I'm going to bump it up just a little bit. Uh, let's go to here, and then font size. What's big? 24. Yeah, okay, you can see that, hopefully. Cool. Uh, we need to respond to changes to this thing, so I'm going to control drag from there to my view controller and make ourselves its delegate. And that is our entire first view controller done. Like I said, it's a trivial Martin editor, right? Nothing fancy here. That's our entire first view controller done. So after a second view controller, I press Command N, uh, choose a Cocoa Touch class. 
It's also view, view controller. I'll call this thing a preview view controller. Next and create. And in our storyboard, this is basically the same as the first one. Uh, I'm going to make another view controller. Uh, UI view controller. Drag this thing out. There we go. And a Linux, I'm a bit pedantic. Then give it a text view as well. Boom. And again, pin that to all the edges. Da, 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 da. You are good. Scrap the constraints. You are zero. Now what you'll see is, cunningly, the uh, safe area insets get applied to this thing even though it will be on a screen that has no safe area. You know, your, your iPhone 10 and so forth have rounded corners, have a notch and so forth. This thing's running on a screen with no clock visible. We've got the full screen. We're going to go ahead and get rid of that entirely. If we choose the view here, we can just say don't use a safe area layout guide and it will run edge to edge on the screen. Now this thing has to be a preview view controller. So I'll choose for my class here. You are a preview view controller. And I'll copy that thing, class name, into the storyboard ID because I'm lazy like that. So we need an outlet for that so we can modify that. Let's make some outlets. There's this first one here I'm going to uh, call in my view controller. I'll call this one, uh, I'm feeling original, so I'll call it text view. And the second one here, I'll drag that one out. I'll call this one preview view. There we go. Great. Okay. Two view controllers. Trivial enough. Now we're going to connect them together. This is the actual hard part, doing the work to make these things talk to each other. Now when the new screen connects, we're told, hey, here's a new screen, what do you want to do? And we'll make a new UI window, make a new instance of our preview view controller, and put it into that window. But that window is ours to look after. We've got to store it away somewhere, track it so it doesn't get released by accident and also make sure we can remove it later on. So, in our main view controller here, uh, here, I'll get rid of this as an editor because it's not a big screen, there we go. It's main view controller here. We're going to make a property to track all the windows that get added as screens are connected and disconnected. So we'll say var additional windows is a UI window array, like that. And now comes the hard part. We want to add an observer into view did load a block of code to run when a screen is connected, what should we do? There's a bit of code here, but I'll walk you through it. We do first uh, notification center dot default dot add observer and we want the for name option. Now in this case is going to be UI screen dot did connect notification. Object will be nil, we don't care what it's done with. Uh, Q again nil, we don't really care which queue it's on. As for the uh, close we want to run, we're going to say first week self in, so we can modify additional windows. Like that. We're going to start by saying uh, guard let self equals self, the strongify self, else return, bail out. And we're going to be passed in, in the notifications object, the screen to use. So I'm going to say uh, guard let new screen equals notification dot object oh, notification dot object mm, oh need notification as well here there we go get past one of these things notification in there we go no oh, that's wrong weak self notification in there we go ready for live coding beautiful like that else we'll just return uh, and we'll typecast that as being a UI screen. So here is a screen that was connected. What's, what's its bound? What's its position and so forth? What do you want to do with it? So I'm going to say, uh, let's get the dimensions first. So let dimensions equals uh, new screen dot bounds, how big it was on the screen. Then we'll make a new window at that size to display stuff in. So let new window equals a UI window with the frame of uh, uh, dimensions. Like that. And we're going to assign that thing uh, our screen that we just got in. Uh, new screen. Boom. Window on that screen. It's still blank, nothing in it. That's our next job is to make a new view controller using our new preview view controller we just assigned, uh, designed in IB. So I'll do guard let VC equals self.storyboard question mark instantiate view controller. Oops. 
identifier was preview view controller. And typecast also as preview view controller. There we go. Else fatal error. Oops. That went wrong, hideously wrong. And now we can go ahead and use that in our window. So I'll say new window dot uh, root view controller equals that view controller we just made. And show it somehow using that wonderful is hidden property that Misha mentioned. And add that to our additional windows array. Uh, additional windows dot append new window. Boom. Fantastic. So that is saying when a screen comes in, make a window for it, assign it to the screen, make a view controller, assign that to the, the window, and then add it to our array so we'll work with it. Now we can go ahead and run that uh, if you want to. We won't do much yet because there's no actual markdown being rendered. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that really quickly and you'll be surprised how easy this is with down or with any of these things really. I'll go to my preview view controller. I'll say uh, first up import down. That's important. I'm going to give this thing a text string property. What is my text string? And whenever it's set, we'll make an instance of down as down with a markdown string of that text. Pull out the attributed string for that as being try down dot to attributed string to uh, attributed string. There we go. And assign that to our preview view dot attributed text equals attributed string. Boom. That's what it takes to render something in markdown in down. Over in the view controller, we want to say da -da -da, uh, this is a UI text view delegate and when texted change is called, we want to uh, try and find our opposite screen. So I'll say uh, guard let preview equals uh, additional windows dot first question mark dot root view controller. Safe typecast as preview view controller. Else return. We have not got a preview being shown right now. If we do, we'll assign its text to be our text view text. I press Command B. Be prepared for comedy errors. It's thinking. It's thinking. It may have worked first time. <laughs> well, steady on. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's see it run first. Shall we? Let's, let's get too confident on that front. Uh, so I'm going to press Command R to launch in the currently woefully bad iPhone XR simulator. The screen is really tiny, so I'll make it a bit, bit, bit small like that. Uh, and I'm going to uh, hopefully see a UI. Boom, there we go. There's my stuff. I'll go to uh, external displays. i choose a 720p. It's really huge. I'll <laughs> make that smaller. There we go. Fine. Now, now you can get ready to clap, okay? Because now I have to see if it actually works first. Uh, I'm going to uh, delete some text and I will add a title. Title, oops, title is, come on, there it is. Hello world. There we go. This is a test. Yeah. So it's actually working correctly. It's only marked now, which is fantastic. Yeah. Hurrah. <laughs> I have only two minutes left to go into the counter, so I have to whiz past the rest of this. Make sure you listen to did uh, dis Disconnect as well, otherwise you'll have all sorts of problems and you will uh, hate yourself. So don't do that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, whiz back to the keynote before my time runs out. So. Great success, it actually worked for a change, but I have some tips. Uh, first things, don't try and show alerts. Alerts need to be dismissed. You can't touch the screen, you can't dismiss them. You might get me very unhappy with you, please don't do that. Uh, I strongly encourage you to use vector artwork. Use PDFs absolutely everywhere for your artwork. You've got no idea what kind of screen you'll be connected to, what kind of 2x or 3x resolution it might be working at. Use vectors. It will look good no matter what screen it's working with. Please, please, please use vectors. There is something that might make you cry at first. Uh, it's called overscan. It's very common on TVs. We don't get it at all on our devices because they're lovely and apple -y. But on TVs, apparently people can't configure them correctly. So I'll put a picture too big or too small. So you don't want to put anything near the very, very outside edges. Give it a little bit of the edge on the outside. So if it is configured badly, it'll still look OK. And always, always, always test on device. It wasn't time to show you. We're out of time. But uh, the simulator and the uh, actual devices behave differently. That did connect notifications called when a thing's plugged in. On the simulator, it'll be called when you launch your app if there's a screen plugged in. On devices, it will not be called. You've got to check UI screen dot screens by hand to see how many screens there are when your app launches. So 
That is building a real app, 22 seconds. Uh, wrap up. You've seen how uh, the Mac OS and iPad landscapes are changing, which I think means multi screen apps are becoming closer than ever. Now is the time to repair yourself, get rid of the state, get rid of the singletons, start using pure functions more and more. It'll make your life much easier in about ooh, five months or so. Uh, so get rid of these, these things. Use structs rather than classes and similar. Be prepared to blend touch and non touch UI at the same time. It's problematic, but you've got to know what you're doing. And of course, you saw some live coding, and it actually worked for me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. Congrats on that successful live coding demo. Yes. Uh, we've got two quick questions before we go for our bio break. Um, first one Do you think there'll be any difference if we are doing this with second screen connected over AirPlay versus cable? So, AirPlay is one of those things uh, a bit like. Um, uh, sending files like AirDrop. You know, sometimes it works absolutely brilliantly. And you're like, this is, this is made by God himself, I suppose, to you know, Johnny Ive and his team. Um, <laughs> other times, it's got a several second lag, and the compression kind of kicks in. It isn't ideal. You're wondering, this is a, probably a bad idea. Should have bought one of those Google things instead. <laughs> um, so, I mean, AirPlay is good, but it's hit and miss. This is going to work. Guaranteed. It's a USB C cable. It's USB 3.1, I think it is, or maybe 3.2. It's 3.1. Um, so it's very, very fast. Huge bandwidth. The picture quality is flawless. It looks amazing. It's identical to having a fully interactive iOS, you know, 60 frames a second, even 120 frames a second device on your uh, local device. Cool. They probably can't do 5K over AirPlay yet, right? <laughs> probably not. Um, okay, anyway, second question. Do you think we'll ever be in a situation where we'll be dealing with multiple external screens, like maybe two or three more connected well, to the iPad? Well, you know, USB-C can do that. Uh, it's interesting that Apple have called it UIScreen.screens. <laughs> There's you know, room there to grow. Uh, I suspect yes, ultimately, but for now, let's just get past the first little problem, OK? <laughs> you know, it's not just a single screen anymore. There's more than one screen. Let's do baby steps and work our way forward. Get that much working. And then we've got all the time in the world to worry about two screens, three screens, four screens, ten screens, who knows what. It was asked by Batman, was it? How many screens have you got? <laughs> thank you very much. All right, thank you, Paul. Um, yeah.